Good morning, everybody. Uh, got a early morning tidbit, epic, mega, something or other tutorial here in the middle. So we've been talking about the possibility of combining your RPG, your Project 3, with Project 4, the platformer. So I wanted to introduce a couple of things that uh, combine a bunch of techniques that we've talked about in the past to sort of make this happen and add one, uh, at least one new little concept. So I'll try to go through it reasonably quickly so I don't ramble on too much. So the idea, the goal is, let's go over to our RPG, we'll save that screen, and our RPG is the, the normal part here, it's our little guy running around the town, and we're using the mega weapon right now. If you're not sure about using the mega weapon, well, uh, check out uh, one of the other tutorials, the other uh, lessons. Now you'll see that there is one uh, signpost over here which does the, uh, triggers an event that uh, freezes and uh, turns all the NPCs red. There's this other signpost over here which is basically the level exit. So if I touch that one, zoom, I am now over in the uh, uh, side scroller world, right? And you'll see if I jump off the edge here, whoa, so very side scroller y platformery there. The question, how did I how did I change that? How much stuff was different? How much stuff was the same? What was redundant? Uh, so let's talk about it sort of step by step. Now, first off, in here, to make that happen, there is this new signpost, and we'll call this signpost, um, call it something interesting, exit sign. Okay, so this is the exit sign, and maybe I'll make it look a little different just because... Um, that kind of cautiony yellow sign to it. How'd that be? Exit, exit sign. Uh, doesn't look awfully yellowy at that point. Whoops. Yeah, the color didn't change too much there. What happened here? Uh, exit sign. wind up getting into changing something that I normally don't change or don't spend too much time on. Let's see, did that? Yeah, that changed. Alright, so now it looks different. I'm not quite sure what did. Okay, so we have these two signs and this second sign has our level exit script on here and the level exit script just says, okay, if the hero, if our hero player collides with this trigger, then load scene and we'll call it, you know, we have a string here to say what scene to call. And if we look here, it is project four. That's our other scene. Okay. And so hit that, we go to project four. So let's look at project four. So if we go to scenes, I've already set up project four as its own scene. Let's go ahead and save that. Now project four's scene looks a little bit like this. And I'm not going to talk too much about this. This is a tile map. We'll cover that in a, another lecture. But the important part to now notice is that we have Hero 1. Here's Hero 1, which looks an awful lot like our hero from the other scene. And in fact, this hero is, I've, I've just created now a prefab hero, which is exactly the same. It's the exact same hero between the two games. But obviously, in this one, he acts considerably different, right? Immediately what happens is that uh, when I launch the scene, he falls down. Gravity has an effect on him. Now, the the animations are a little bit odd in here. You know, this is a bit of a compromise in that the down animation has become my idle animation because now gravity is just pulling him down. And he sits there being idle and left and right still work, but up and down don't do anything because he is governed by gravity for now. Okay. So how does that work? First off, um, a little bit of setup. So let's go ahead. We we'll look at the hero in here, and and again, the hero. All this stuff will be just like it was. Um, he has his same circle collider, his hero script, his sprite render. Everything is the same. But I have made some modifications to the hero script. So let me introduce a couple of 
things in here. First off, uh, I want to introduce you to the concept of these enums or enumerated values, enumerated types. So what, I'm, what you can do with enumerators is you can do things like, you know, imagine you had something that's a collection of values that sort of makes sense, like days of the week, months of the year, that sort of thing, or, or just classifications. It might be car, bus, you know, brand names, anything like that that belong to sort of a grouping that makes sense. So what I've done here is I've set up an enumerated type called game type. And I've said, okay, this public enum game type, which is going to be its own type here, uh, can be one of two values. It can be either an RPG or a side scroller, right? So anything that is declared to be of that type can be either this value or that value. And you'll see it down here. I now have game type as part of my hero class. I have game type, game type, in lowercase, equals game type. This is how I get at the values. I have to refer to the type name and then say dot. And in this case, the default will be RPG. Okay, so by default, the game type of this hero is RPG. But if I look now, so how do I tell? Am I in an RPG or am I in a side scroller? So during start, during my start routine, the first thing the hero does, he did all his weapon stuff, sets that up and added a rigid body or, or checks his rigid body and so on. And then there's a little bit of logic here to figure out, okay, what type of game is he in and what does he need to really kind of do to, to uh, deal with that? Okay, so we use the scene manager. So we've used the scene manager for a lot of things. Now make sure to add scene management to your script here. That wasn't in the normal hero script before, but we'll add scene management. And that allows the hero to say, okay, what scene am I in? So the first thing the hero asks is the hero asks, what is the active scene? What's the name of the active scene? And if the name of the active scene, scene manager dot get active scene, friends name equals RPG, it says, ah, okay, I am in an RPG game. Maybe I should make that the first thing, make that obvious, okay? Just kind of move these things around just to emphasize. Whoops. All right. So the first thing I do is I set the type of game. So if it's if I'm in the RPG scene, set game type to game type RPG. That's a little bit redundant in this case because I also set that as the, the default type, but whatever. I want to make sure. So if the name of the current scene is RPG, I go ahead and set game type to game type RPG. If I wasn't in the RPG scene, I would set the game type to game type side scroller. Okay, then I can refer to that in other parts of my code to see, okay, make the action slightly different uh, based on what type of game I'm in. Now I could do this with things like inheritance and so on, but for now, let's do it this way to demonstrate this. All right, so I'll do another little bit of housekeeping while we're doing this. Uh, what happens next? Okay, based on the type of game, I want to set gravity one of two ways. In the case of an RPG, we do not have an X and Y, so gravity is set to none. There is no gravity in our RPG because we're looking down, we're top down. So let's say top down, no gravity. Okay, and in a side scroller, from side, gravity down in the y direction okay so we in this case if we are in not in an rpg we set gravity to be this new vector nothing in the x direction but negative 9.81 in the y direction just like we would sort of expect if we had set up this game as a normal side scroll that would be it now one other thing that happens in the case of our rpg is that we go ahead and we say all right generate our our NPCs in this scene. The other version has no idea how to deal with NPCs, so we'll leave that out for now. So we'll just say, okay, if we're an RPG, do these things as normal. If we're not in an RPG, go ahead, set me to side scroller and change gravity. So that's how gravity suddenly does the right thing in one scene or the other, okay? So that will affect everybody. This isn't just the gravity of the player. This is the gravity of the whole game the whole everything because it's we're setting the physics 2d that we're setting the gravity of the 2d physics engine all right so that's the first thing now what's the next thing populate npcs totally normal my glow normal update 
uh, is actually even going to be normal. It grabs the joystick direction and it will grab the horizontal and vertical direction. But the thing we want to change now is we're not going to allow the player to control up and down like they were before. The player, this joystick, we're only going to use the horizontal component of that. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. But I decided for now that uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and still collect that joy direction just in case we want to use it for something else later on. Um, so here in fixed update, this is where we caused the motion of the player before. This is really where we translated in the fixed update routine. We would say, OK, if the current velocity of the rigid body is not the same as the joy direction, then we need to do something about it. OK, so if there is some joy direction, we want this to happen. So normally, we would pass it. We would just say, add a force that is the difference between the joy direction and my rigid body velocity. Okay, So that would be the change that would allow us to add a force appropriate to that. And that would be in x and y. Now, in the case of the game being a side scroller, I do not want to allow this joy direction to have an impact on the force in the y direction. That for now. Maybe I'll change that because, excuse me, eventually I want the character to be able to jump and so on and do something with re regards to that other that other uh, direction. But for now, I'm just going to say, okay, if game type is side scroller, then set that force specifically or set the force that we're going to add here. We're going to set the Y component of that to be zero so that this force can only affect the left and right motion of the player. Everything else is exactly the same. The weapon system, exactly the same. Okay, so all I had to do was kind of modify this a little bit where we said, you know, again, we have a way to detect what type of game it is using this enumerated type. And we'll use that in this in this case, you know, real, real simple, just one of two values. It could almost be a Boolean, but I figured we'll introduce enums today as well. And then we have our bit of setup inside the start method for our player here. So the player knows about what type of scene he's in and sets the global gravity. And we'll take on this one extra task of populating the NPCs or not. So this routine, nothing happens. And then we have this little bit in its fixed update routine where it decides, OK, if it's a side scroller, do not allow for a change of force in the Y direction. All right, so that's how our same structure, our same hero can be used in both scenes. Um, and so next you'll ask, well, what is this thing he's walking on? What is this thing now? Uh, how did that work out? Now that is, we're using a tile map. And that's going to be one of the cool things that we're going to talk about a lot. And um, I'll just give you a little bit of a hint here. If we look in the scene that we're designing over here, and if I select, there's this new thing in here called a grid. And we add a grid saying, uh, let's see, create empty a 2D object tile map. Right? So we have this tile map over here. And we'll name that ground. And I can then use this tile palette, which we'll set up in another, um, another tutorial as well. Let me just quickly show you. So I can set this up down here. And will happen. So I've, I've set this up a tile map with a ground and that ground has a tile map collider on it. So you can do fancy things with tile maps and tile map colliders. Now we can say he drops down there and he's going to drop down there. And oh, lo and behold, I forgot the camera is also moving around so I could get even fancier. Ready? Um, so let's go ahead. Now I am definitely kind of repurposing my artwork here. Normally this game is sort of uh, more designed. This artwork is really designed for a top-down RPG, but what the heck. Um, this is pretty good. You can repurpose some of these assets this way. So, all right, I'm going to drop down here and we'll try to get over there. Can I 
can't jump or anything like that fancy yet. And let's see, anything down here? Woo, okay. And there we go. I think we've reached the bottom now. Yep. All right. So that was a quick example of transitioning between our top-down RPG and our side-scrolling uh, platformer sort of thing. There's that part. Let's save that. And you see, there we were in that scene, and it's still, you know, everything back and forth. Now, the cool thing, if I set that hero to have that hero script to be static, then I could do things also like carry the high score and stuff back and forth between the two scenes. We'll cover that maybe next as well, or in another another stream. Okay. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Uh, hope you're safe where you are. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. Stay well. Stay at home, and stay tuned.